In this video, I'm gonna go over some of the basics of how to use Gaia GPS. I'm gonna go over some of the stuff on the tablet, some stuff on the computer, some of the basic functions and controls, as well as how you can plan a route using Gaia. If you don't already have Gaia, I've got a link to it in the description. If you use my link, you can actually get up to 52% off. And if you're already a little bit familiar with it, I'll also put some timestamps down there. That way you can go down and see kind of what I'm talking about throughout this video, and you can skip what's not relevant to you. I'll start with the tablet and cell phone side of things, although it doesn't really matter because the way Gaia GPS works is kind of like the cloud. You've got one account and it works across all your devices, whether it's cell phone, tablet, computer, whatever you do on one thing will be synced across to all of the others. If you don't already have a tablet for Gaia GPS, I do recommend the iPad mini, and I think this one's the fourth generation, but I'll put a link to it in the description. The iPad and iOS just seems to work really well with Gaia GPS, and there's nothing wrong with Android, but it just seems to work a little bit better on an iOS. If you do go with an iPad, make sure you get the one with the cellular built in. Now, you don't need a SIM card. I don't have a SIM card in here. I don't have a cell phone plan for this, but the Wi-Fi only tablets don't have a GPS chip built in, whereas the cellular ones do. I have the 16 gigabyte version and it is plenty. It depends what you're going to do with it, but it is plenty if you're just using the base maps. It is surprising how little memory the Gaia Topo maps take up. I downloaded the entire state of Wyoming and used 200 megabytes. If you want to add other map layers like satellite layers, those are the ones that really start taking up the space. So that's when you may want to start considering going larger. Or if you're going to use your iPad for other things other than just maps, then you may want to go larger than 16 gigabytes. Of course, if you go with Android, well, that's when you start getting the advantage with Android because most of them are expandable. So you can add another memory card in. So let's open this up and take a look at the app. We'll start with the basic controls on here, so the menu across the top. There is a, a slight different layout between this and the cell phone version, and probably the Android and the iOS version, but the icons are the same, so they'll do the same thing. So the first one up here is just the minimize and the maximize screen. So on this, it brings up the extra little menu off to the side. On the cell phone, it brings up the extra menu across the top. When you maximize, when you go full screen, this actually moves on the cell phone, and it's up in the top left of the map. Next one over is the map layer that you're currently on, or the ones that you've selected. So when you push on that, it allows you to select what you have pulled up. I really only use two or three map layers on the cell phone at any one time. Uh, Gaia Topo, so that's the base maps, really good map. Uh, zoom in, it's got plenty of detail, it uses barely any memory on the device. And then the other one which I have on here all the time is public lands layer. And the public lands layer is it's really nice because it shows you the land ownership. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see I've got this uh, dark green. That's national forest land. Uh, you've got this kind of red color here is national park. And then there's yellows as BLM like that. So it's really useful if you're finding somewhere to camp um, because you can camp in the, all of, well, you can camp in national forest and BLM land. Um, it, you saw when I zoomed out, I pinched to zoom in, zoom out, the screen orientation changed. If I want to go back to north, I just push the little compass at the top right. If you want to use more than just those two, if I go back to the layers, I've got these down here. These are ones that I use regularly. Uh, so I can just tap on any of those to pull them up and show them on the screen. If I want to add other ones that I've not used before, down here at the bottom I've got add map layers. So I press on that and it's got worldwide sources of maps. So I could pick any one of those. But I'm going to go back and um, I'm going to use the aviation, the VFR one that I've used a few times in the past. And occasionally I have loaded on here just for the drone flying. So when I tap on that, it's moved it up here to my active layers and I can change the order. So right now, the one at the bottom is the topo map. That's my base map. Uh, and then above it, I've got the aviation. And then right at the top, I've got the public lands. Uh, so let's say I wanted to have uh, the aviation at top. I just press those little lines and drag it up to the top. And now that's going to be my top layer. And I can adjust the transparency by dragging this across. So now it's fully on display. Nothing else is visible. When I go back here, if I turn it down a little bit, you can start seeing through it and you can see some of the roads on there from the base map. Removing it again is very simple. Just press the little red X and it's gone. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll also see I've got some tracks or some routes that I've got on here. If I go into here, those are controlled with the map overlay. So I can turn those on and off over here. Uh, right now I've got everything on except for the waypoint labels, but I can turn off the routes and the tracks and it's disappeared and it gives me a much cleaner view. When I scroll out, it's not on there. If I want to add them back in, go back to the overlays. I'm going to turn on the routes and the tracks, and you see everything comes back. 
Next button we have up here is the plus button, and that's where you're gonna be adding stuff to your display here. So the top one's record a track, so if you're traveling somewhere and you wanna be able to revisit, you're gonna press that, it'll record where you're traveling. Underneath that we have the add a waypoint and add a waypoint my location. Now those are two different things. When you do add a waypoint, it will add a waypoint to wherever is in the center of your screen. So if I pushed it now, it's gonna add a waypoint right here in the middle. The other option, add a waypoint my location, uh, well I'm not in, where's this? Uh, South Dakota, uh, I'm in Kentucky, so it'd add a waypoint like way off in Kentucky instead. Fourth option is gonna be to create a route. So let's go ahead and we'll open that up. Creating a route is not ideal on the tablet, so I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time but it will uh, give you a little dot. You can push, you can drag it around to where you want to start. Down at the bottom left, you change the mode. So right now it's set to hiking. That's going to really give you the straightest line route between the two places, um, cycling, driving, and then straight line. Um, the top three are only available while you're connected to the network or, or connected to the internet. Bottom one, straight line is available when you're offline. So uh, I'm going to put it to, actually I'm gonna leave it on hiking, and then if I wanna change uh, or add another point to this route, I just press and hold for a second, and it'll add the route that it thinks is best. So it's given us kind of a little square here. Uh, and you'll see if I change the mode from hiking to driving, it'll probably change it to using main roads rather than the back roads, yeah. So where hiking is really the, the, the shortest route. And while I'm planning on here, I can tap one of the little dots that I've added and press the edit button and I can change it to a waypoint rather than just a point along the route. Once I'm done, I'll press save. Uh, on this one, I'm just actually going to cancel it and clear it. Going back to the little plus icon, the fourth option down is to, sorry, the fifth option down is to create an area. And that's not really as useful for overlanding. It's more for people who want to measure out an area. So people who are plotting areas of land, you can use it to mark out like OHV parks, off-road parks, uh, and you can also use it to download maps and quickly and easily select which maps you want to download for a certain area. But to download maps, I personally just use the next option down, which is the map button or the button that says download maps. And I'll give you a little rectangle shape. You just press and drag the dots out to select the area that you want to download, and then you'll press save. What it will do is it will download the maps that you currently have on there. So right now I have the Gaia Topo and I have the public lands layer up. It will download just those two layers. And I've selected the entire state of South Dakota, and you can see it is 317 megabytes with both those layers together. If that's a little too much, I can lower the detail. So that is the most detailed map available. Uh, to lower the detail, I can adjust the slider on the left-hand side. And so now I've dropped it down to 22.1 megabytes. Once you're ready to, just click save and it'll start downloading that immediately. Going back to the plus icon, you've got a couple more options. Take a picture uh, is nice if you're recording a route, if you're actively recording a route and you take a picture, it will add it to that route's details. And actually it's the same with adding a waypoint if you're actively recording. Uh, and then at the bottom, you've got the option to import a file. I've never used that. I've never had to use that. If someone texts you a route or airdrops you a route, or if you open it from Facebook or a website on your phone or on your tablet, actually it will automatically add it to Gaia as long as you're opening it with Gaia. The final thing in the top menu is the current location button. So when you push this button, it will move the map to your current location and it will track your current location, but the map will be orientated north. If you push it a second time, it will orientate the map to whatever direction you're facing. So if you're driving and navigating and you wanna see which way you wanna turn, that's a nice feature. Underneath those top menus, you'll see I've got some numbers here. These represent what's going on with your current route that you're tracking. So right now I'm not tracking anything, so I've not moved any distance, I've not climbed any. It does show me I've got elevation, sunrise, sunset, but these are statistics for that current route and you can change what you're looking at by pressing and holding your finger on there. So I could change where it says distance, I could change that to current speed if I wanted. So it shows me how fast I'm traveling and well, obviously I'm not traveling fast at all sitting here in my office. Uh, but I could also show current location. That's actually a good one. I like to have current location up with longitude and latitude. That way if I ever need to tell anyone or communicate quickly, I've got that available instantly. If I exit the full screen mode again, you'll see we've got a few more options. And, and I've got tabs across the bottom here that show us the options that we've got. So right now I'm on the trip tab and I've got another button to record my current route. And once again, I can take pictures of it as I'm going. So that's just a quick and easy way to start recording. You don't always have to press the plus button and record a track. It does the same thing. 
The second tab on the bottom is the Discover, and that will show you a lot of the public tracks that you have available around you. And you can actually filter these. So right now it's showing hiking tracks near me. Uh, if I filter that, I can, I'll turn off hiking so it's four by four only, press apply, and it shows me ones that people have recorded nearby. So it appears that the, the closest one is Pumpkin Hollow Road off in the Daniel Boone National Forest, but I can scroll through these and uh, find a bunch of things that people have recorded and shared on here publicly. Spars Creek, that's another good one. The next tab over on here is the Save tab, and this shows you everything that's currently on your uh, tablet uh, on, to do with Gaia GPS. And in the top left, you have Filter, so right now it's on Maps, and I can change that to All, but I can look at just the tracks, routes, waypoints, and so on. That's nice if you want to delete something or if you want to organize. Finally, you've got the settings, and that's where you're just gonna change your account settings. So now let's head over to the computer and we'll take a look at how I plan the routes because I don't use the tablet. It's a lot easier on the computer and we can show you some of the features on there. Up the top right here, you have your menu, and on there you can view the folders with all your tracks, your routes, everything else in it, waypoints, and you have the option here to upload, and from there you can upload other tracks from other sources, so something maybe you've downloaded from alltrails.com or something from one of the backcountry discovery route websites. On the left-hand side here, you have all of the options for the map layers with this one. So on here, these are the ones I've added that I've used in the past. I can add more here at the bottom so I can pick map layers from other sources or other countries. My most common map layers are just these two at the top. So I've got the public lands layer and that's what you see over here on the right hand side. So the, the green is the forest service, the yellow is BLM and uh, there's also, it's got things like the state parks, national parks and so on. And then I just use the Gaia Topo most of the time because it's actually, it's a pretty good map. Occasionally, uh, I may use the US Forest Service, so here would be a good place to use the Forest Service maps. So I've allowed this up, it shows me uh, all the Forest Service roads. If I scroll in a little bit here, you can see that this one's a four-wheel drive road. Uh, this one's an unpaved road up here, so I'll scroll back out. Um, another good map layer for planning is the Nat Geo Illustrated layer. I don't think you'll see anything here, but if you watch one of my other videos, like the one on how to plan your overland route, you'll see how I've used the Nat Geo layers. Occasionally I do use the satellite with labels layer. It's pretty good, but I just prefer using Google Maps just because on Google Maps I can also have the option of using Street View. It's more integrated. So let's close this and I'll get rid of the US Forest Service maps and we'll look to the next icon down. So here's where you manage your, your saved routes, your saved waypoints. Next one is print, and I like this one. Um, I use this a lot for putting maps in my videos. I'll actually print to PDF, and I'll use the PDF file, but it will print everything that you see on the screen here. Uh, the next two are the most useful ones. So this one is the create waypoint button. When you do that, it will drop a map pin in the middle of the screen that you have. You can click and you can drag that to various places, and you can save it. When you save it, it gives you a suggested name. You can change that. You can change the icon. So I could change this to uh, looking for, I use stars for things that are points of interest. And then got this little camping icon here. And that's the, the main thing I use it for is camping. What I typically do is go to iOverlander and I'll pick a, a place that looks really nice and I'll copy and paste the coordinates up into the top left here. And when you do that, it will send to the screen on the point that you've chosen and you can just click the, the waypoint button and easily add one. This little line on the left is what allows you to create the routes. You click it and you can drop points wherever you want to go. So I can drop my first point here down on the main paved road and my second point up here. Uh, at Hancock Flat. Once again, when you're creating this route, you have the travel method at the bottom. So right now you can see it's set to hiking. I could change it to driving or straight line. And actually sometimes I leave it on hiking because it will do the shortest route. If I switch to driving, sometimes it does some odd things. It'll try and take me down maybe around the pavement and up a different way. Whereas hiking typically follows the kind of routes that I want to follow. Of course, you do have to be careful that it's not taking you down footpaths when it's set on hiking. If it is taking you a different way from the way you want to go, you can add points. So I could go along the middle here and I can click and drag to add another one. So let's say I wanted to go via Rust Spring on this four-wheel drive road. It will now take me up this way rather than on the, the bigger, uh, better maintained road. And once you're happy with your route, you go down to the bottom and you'll click Save. And you can give it a name. Uh, you also have the option down here for the more uh, and on here you can edit it. So let's say that you decided you want to go a little bit further. You can edit it and it will let you continue adding points. So I can go elsewhere. 
if I've decided I've gone too far, I can also remove the waypoints just by clicking on them and clicking this little uh, trash can icon. And then uh, I've also got this little camp icon that I added earlier separately. I can add it to the route directly by clicking, dragging, adding this little point. And when I click on it again, I can turn that into a waypoint and I can put my little camp icon on there. Once I'm happy with it, I can click save. The other thing that I use quite often on here is the open details page. So when you click on that, it takes you to the route that you've created and it tells you a little bit about it. So down here, I've got the elevation changes and you can see that the dot on the map follows the elevation change. So I can see kind of what altitude I'll be at. So if I'm camping, maybe I don't want to camp up at 10,000 feet. It might be a little cold this time of year. At the bottom, you've got the distance, the ascent and the descent. And if this is a route that you recorded on your phone or your tablet, it will also give you your times down here. From here, you also have the option to add it to a folder. I find it really useful to organize all my routes by state, so I'll add them in folders by state. That way, when I'm traveling through an area, I get the option to hide it or view it on my phone or tablet. Hopefully this video helps you out. I know there's a ton of stuff to learn with Gaia GPS, and we could probably be here for hours talking about it, but this hopefully gave you a good general overview. If you do have any other questions, definitely drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you don't already have Gaia GPS, I've also got the link in the description to get it. Uh, I do get a little bit of commission when you sign up using my link, but more importantly, you earn up to 52% off, so some big savings. If you found it useful, make sure you give this video a thumbs up because that helps me out as well. Thanks for watching.